Okay, so we've got our files now. This is my downloads folder. Uh, so I'm going to go in here and this is the SSH flash win folder. Now we've got our files in here for SSH flash win, but what we also need is the files from RetroLeap. And because we're going to be doing the LF2000 uh, device, which is our Leap Pad 2 here, it's an LF2000 device. So we need to copy the LF2000 files from uh, the RetroLeap um, extracted zip file that we got earlier. Uh, we're going to copy them into our SSH flash win directory. So I just need to do that. Just all those files that start with LF2000, copy those and we're going to put them into our SSH flash win directory. There we go. So they're all in there now, ready to go. So I've got my uh, LeapPad 2 connected now to my laptop and I've also got it plugged into the power power as well there. Um, I don't think I've got any batteries in this so I need uh, the power connected. So what we're going to do as we did yesterday, let's get ourselves a command prompt open. Same as yesterday, it needs to be an administrator command prompt for doing what we're going to do. And let's, where are we? Right, so there we go. So we're going to get our path of our SSH flash win folder. There it is. Just going to right click on there and go copy. And in our command window, we are going to go CD and then paste the full path in here to get to our SSH flash win folder. And then we're going to run SSH flash hyphen win. So here we go. We're back to this menu, the same one as we got yesterday. Um, now the device that we're going to want to do here is we've got here the leap pad 2 so we've got some instructions there as to how we need to turn on our device so it's hold the right arrow and home buttons while it's powering on so it's going to be that one the right arrow and the home button so it's, so it's actually these the right arrow and the home button and then i need to turn it on with my other spare finger let's see and we've got that nice familiar screen up there. Okay, so we're now on to the next thing here, which is LF2000. So it's going to, so yeah, we're doing the Leap Pad 2. So it's the LF2000 choice that we want there. So let's go, go number three. And let's see what happens. There we go, we're getting that familiar verbose logging there. It's just using the correct files. It's writing the surgeon files to the device. Now, we may now get the same issue we had yesterday, and this is why sometimes we need to use the USB LAN driver. I put the USB LAN driver on yesterday, so it might be no, right, so that's not working. You see, we're getting a load of errors here. So what we need to do now, because we can see that that hasn't worked properly, even though it's moved on to the next phase of this. So we need to say control C. There we go. Okay. So what we've got now, or what's happened now, is our device has actually got Surgeon running on it, even though it's still got this screen up um, on here. It is actually now running Surgeon, but SSH Flash can't connect to it because the uh, connection that's been made for Surgeon here, or the Ethernet connection, Windows 10 hasn't set it up correctly. And as per yesterday, what we're going to do here is we are going to verify that's the case by going to Device Manager. 
and let's see now what, what's happened. So we've got our network adapters, we've got our data logic USB LAN adapter there. Now that's what I, I installed yesterday when we were doing the LF1000 um, Leap, Leap Stir Explorer uh, video. So I think what's happened here, and we'll verify it in a minute, is it's using the data logic driver, that's what we wanted, but I think that it's going to be the IP addressing which is wrong. So let's go and check this out. Let's do what we did yesterday. So I'd recommend having a look at my video from yesterday about putting the data logic driver on. Yeah, you can see here, we've now got, we've got my Wi-Fi um, adapter there, but we've also got Ethernet 6 here, and I'm going to assume this is the data logic driver. So I'll go on here, meter connection, da -de da -de da And we can see that, yeah, so the IP address that, so it's using the data logic driver, so that's ultimately what we wanted, but it's actually set it up again with an incorrect IP assignment. So I found that when I've been doing this before, we really want to go into change adapter options and change the IP from here. If you try and do it through the screen that I was just on previously, for some reason it doesn't uh, take the address correctly. So 169.254, we want to be on the 8 range for Surgeon. Um, and then we can, as long as we don't set it to one, uh, one um, I'll tell you what, let's set it to 15 just so we're not conflicting with what we did yesterday. So as long as we don't set that last number to one, then we should be okay. All right, so we're going to say okay. We're going to close that. And now what I suggest we do is we'll try running SSH flash win again. There we go. We want number LF2000, which is number three. And what I expect here, in fact, what happened yesterday, we went through, we got a load of errors about booting surgeon because it's, because it's already booted. Now, fingers crossed, what should happen now? The device is already running surgeon. What should happen now is we should see, ah, uh, there we go. That's better, that's what we want to see. So we can see there it's flashing Flashing the kernel LF2000 UI image, that's perfect, that's what we want. And now we're writing the root, root file system image, and that's the, uh, the image which contains uh, the RetroLeap software that we're going we're gonna to want to run on here. So as I say, probably just while it's waiting to do this, it's probably going to be worth... Um, just referring to um, yesterday's video on this. Um, uh, now, what's happened here? Ah, now we've got this message again about do we want to do we want to format the ROMs partition? Yep, we're going to say yes to that. As that's the first time of doing this. And there we go. So sorry, just to say, to continue what I was saying earlier. Yeah, refer to yesterday's video um, where I flashed the uh, the Leapster Explorer, just to see how you get the USB LAN driver on the Data Logic USB LAN driver on. Um, bit of a shame because I've I've already got it installed on here and it's picked it up. Um, so there we go. So now it's done everything. It's rebooting the host. Might have just heard a little noise there where our computer's picking it up again. And hopefully, fingers crossed, there we go. We now have, that's the familiar RG, RGUI uh, interface for RetroArch or RetroLeap. Um, so there we go. So we've now got our main menu. Um, this is what I would expect to see for RetroArch. You can see, as I've alluded to earlier in, in one of my earlier videos, we're now we're running in a landscape view, which means we've got to turn the whole machine this way. 
Um, now, what I also talked about in one of the other videos was whether or not this directional pad is going to work correctly. Right, so what I'm finding on here is I'm having to go left and right to go up and down the menu and up and down actually work the same way as left and right would would work on this menu i.e. Um, uh, doing a sort of a page up or page down uh, jump so um, we can go in here I'm not sure actually which button to use if I want to select or go into ah right so it's actually the volume up button is the select button when we're moving through the menus now we can see on here we've got the included cores here I'll talk about these in another video um, because these are the cores that are included as standard with retro leap um, and um, I've, I'll talk about in another video how you can add more cores um, and some of the work that I've done uh, in that area um, and also just about the included course but there we are so hopefully that gives you an impression and I think it's this button here is the back button yep yeah, that will take us back to the previous menu so like I said a bit of work to be done there because the the, um, the directional pad is set up incorrectly we're, we're doing up and down here for left and right and same thing vice versa with the what should be the up and down arrows um, and uh, we also want to make use of our home button as well. Okay, so that's the end of this video, um, and um, yeah, I hope you found it useful, and um, yeah, stay tuned for more. Thanks.